Welcome back. back. We're chatting with, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Emily McCormick is here. She works with Turpentine Creek. And I know you wanted to talk a little bit about a festival that you have coming up relatively yeah. soon. And why don't you tell us about that? It's our Emily? 13th annual powwow. Uh -huh. And um, that's happening Father's Day weekend. Starts Friday the 17th through the 19th. Um, there are intertribal dances, um, vendors set up uh, all in the front field right out front of Turpentine Creek. Okay. And they go on Friday evening, all day Saturday, and most of the day on Sunday. Everything's usually over about five. Um, and so it's contest. So it's contest for um, the different tribes, and there's a lot of drumming and singing. And now this um, powwow has been really going on for 13 years. Yep, this will be. It started years. out uh, as a as an event of Turpentine Creek. Right. It's a it's a fundraising event for okay. the animals mm -hmm. um, and to bring people out to to see the cats also. If you go to the powwow, you do get a discount to come in to the refuge, mm -hmm. um, $2 off. The powwow itself is $5 per person per day, or $10 for the whole weekend mm -hmm. pass. Mm -hmm. And the contests go on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, so a lot of people, and different dances go on each time, so a lot of people now, like to check that out. We were looking at pictures <laughs> earlier to, to let people know what a powwow is. Are these actual Native Americans that come yeah. in, and do they compete with each other? Or? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're from um, all over. A lot come from Oklahoma, um, seems to be most of the dancers. And, yeah, mm -hmm. there's um, there's usually uh, gourd dancing. Um, they'll do a big grand entry with color guard at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Of each and, and they'll session. dress is what we see right, here on the screen native. here. Oh yeah, yeah, really colorful. Yep, yep. And then yeah. Sunday, and you know they finish up, and then the awards are presented to those that won mm -hmm. um, out of each dance uh, cont contest. And sometimes there's anywhere from four dancers to mm -hmm. you know twenty or so. Wow. Yeah. Um, depending on the dance. Now, when they come to do this powwow, they'll they'll do dance and demonstration. Will they will they show will they have wares to sh to sell to? Will they have booths or any of that? Kind yeah, of thing, there's or? booths set up the whole okay. way around. And, okay. and there's anything food vendors to different crafts mm -hmm. to jewelry, um, you name it. They're Is this an all uh, Native American event? Or, um, or for the most part, the there's most other part, vendors yeah. too. Uh -huh. Okay. You know, local vendors that come out from. Well, when you Eureka. say food vendors, I'm, I'm wondering if there'll be some Native American food. Oh, there's American usually somebody with uh, that sells Indian tacos and things like okay. that, and then there's everything. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. Burger, hot dog. Yeah. You know, <laughs> anything that you. <laughs> Indian burger or hot see, dog doesn't matter. But, yeah. for, but for someone that has never experienced something like that, I mean, I've never experienced right. anything. It'd be it'd be fun, it'd just be fun to go. Yeah, it's a really neat event to see mm -hmm. and. Um, a lot of people come, like I said, for all three days, you know, because there's yeah. different dances each day. And um, and it's just, uh, it's really interesting. I mean, the first time, I mean, I've been there for all of them, but the first one that I ever saw, I had no idea, yeah. you know, and it's really beautiful. Yeah. They're dancing. Yeah. Yeah. And awesome. do they go on all day? Yeah. Um, do they have spe certain events throughout the day that right, they schedule? Right. Uh, Thursday, or I'm sorry, Friday at 3 o'clock will be grand entry. And that... The dancing usually goes on until about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, sometimes mm -hmm. longer, just depending. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's not as hot as it is right now. Right. Um, Saturday, the vendors all open at 10. Uh, dancing and grand entry, again, is starts at noon. And then mm -hmm. I think again at 3 or 4. Mm -hmm. And it'll go on into the evening. And then Sunday, at, again, at 10 and noon starts grand entry. And then it wraps up Now, is this a paid event for us? Or is it... Is it well, is there an entry fee to come? Yeah, it's $5, $5 a day. $5, okay. 10 for the weekend. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And is, is there camping available? Uh, in, not we, there, but probably other places that... Yeah, we do have an RV site oh, okay. Um, okay. at our facility, but I'm sure it's probably booked up. Um, we do. We have put tents other places. It's ten dollars a night mm -hmm. um, to tent camp, plus mm -hmm. your admission into the refuge. But you're close um, to your Eureka Springs. You're how, right. how, how far away is seven miles south? Seven miles south. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure okay. the treehouse is booked. Yeah, all the rooms are. Well, we have five other units now. Oh, really? Um, I don't know if you've heard of that. The safari lodging, and it's set up like a tent camp is in Africa. Though they're not just tents; oh, cool. they're actual buildings with canvas mm -hmm. um, wrapped. And they're really awesome. We have, um, they're all themed from the different areas of Africa where they're named after. And uh, it's awesome. There's a big community deck for those units with a hot tub on it and a mm. fire pit. Wow. So I and think that would just be deck. great fun. Oh, yeah. And you wake, you know, wake they're booked the all the time. And you wake up, yeah, hearing the lions can, caroling Can you give us night. an idea what the pricing range uh, is? Each room 
Uh, we have we also have two other lodging rooms and the treehouse, mm -hmm. and each room is 150 a night, and that includes your admission for the two days that you'd okay. be there. Uh -huh. And which and leads us into uh, the Turpentine Creek Refuge Wildlife Center, Re Wildlife, Wildlife Refuge Center. Center. So okay. Tell us, mm -hmm. tell us about that. And what's your role there? What? Um, I've just now <laughs> become the curator. Um, which means what? Which means uh, pretty much manage things on a daily basis. Um, I do Tag all the hiring. Your yeah, yeah, exactly. You get a title and you get paid less. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, uh, we are a nonprofit, mm -hmm. yeah. so um, we have been. We started in '92 and we rescue exotic cats and bears nationwide, um, and all these animals are product of the exotic animal pet trade. Um, so and it's, that's, uh, it, it's still going on even though that oh, it's, yeah. it, it, uh, it's a huge problem in yeah. this country that not enough people are aware of and it's it's shocking the numbers that are of animals that are out there. And does someone, uh, is it typical that they, they take an animal when it's small and then when it gets too big they can't manage it exactly. so they just, right. just let it go? Or? I don't know if it's a cool thing yeah. or see I have a tiger. You know they're two to four pounds when they're born they're adorable. Yeah. And but then, they're going to turn into 400 to 600 mm -hmm. pounds. And they're a wild animal, That's no right. matter what you... You can take it the wild. I mean, look at the different dog issues that have gone on and the more you hear about in the mm -hmm. recent years. Mm -hmm. They've been domesticated for hundreds of thousands of years. Right. We're talking right. about wild animals. You cannot mm -hmm. take the wild animal yeah. out of a tiger, out of a lion, you know. Mm -hmm. um, right now, the United States Humane Society estimates there's anywhere between 10 and 20,000 big cats in this country. And only 15% wow, of that lot. is in zoos and sanctuaries. That's a like lot. Wow. It's insane. Um, there's <laughs> more tigers in the state of Texas than there are left in the wild. And, you know, all this stuff has come out in the news about, you know, tigers could be extinct in the next 10 years. Yeah. And, of course, that's what happens with every animal. And then we start getting concerned mm -hmm. um, when it's going to be too late. But, but by having them as a pet isn't going to save the species in the wild, isn't going to help. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you have people from that... Uh, point of view that think they're helping save the tiger. Um, then you have people that are breeding and selling to the public. We rescue from them. They've been shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, facilities that have been <laughs> shut down. Um, you know, locally there was one here a couple years ago that we had to go in and rescue um, nine animals. Um, but backyards, basements, we rescued mm. a cougar out of an oil drum. Oh um, my gosh. Deplorable conditions because this two to four pound baby, oh gosh, got big and now it wants to eat you. Mm -hmm. It's wow. a tiger. So you know. if somebody comes out to your facility, what, what are they going to see? Well, we have our compound area. It's a mm -hmm. self-guided portion. There's stories in front of all the animals um, to tell where they came from, why we had to rescue them. There's also a guided tour that runs every hour on the hour from 11 until 4. And it's an all-day pass. So you can come for an early tour, whatever, leave, go into Eureka shop, come back, feedings at 5. Mm -hmm which is a really cool thing to see. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't get to see that at many facilities. What's cool about it? Well, the animals, you know, well, in this heat, you might come out and they might be sleeping, taking a nap. Yeah. They're cats anyway. They right. sleep, you know, look at your domestic cat. They mm -hmm. sleep sure. all day. And these guys don't have to hunt, so they're lazy. They know they're going to be fed, you know? <laughs> exactly. And so about, you know, 4 o'clock, they're getting up and moving around and just they're, waiting for their food. Yeah. And you, you may see this quieter you know, setting when you're there earlier and at feeding time it's accelerated by a hundred. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, you know, it becomes, they become very possessive of their food right. and so you see a tiger become a tiger. And you have part. expanded through the years. Oh yeah. Because of the Yeah, the guided necessity. tour goes out on a half a mile tour loop and what we've built is quarter half acre habitat areas um, so that the animals can have space to run, be a tiger, be a lion, be a bear. Mm -hmm. um, which is what they're not getting to do when they're owned by private individuals. Right. We have over 400 acres um, to build on, so the potential for our facility is phenomenal. Being a nonprofit, it's a slow growing process. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, but we have completed, I think, 28 of those habitats. We just opened up two leopard ones last year with an adjoining building where the leopards were in all winter um, in a heated area. Uh, so that was awesome for them. But it's a never ending cycle. We raise money, build these enclosures, and Need you know, money again. in six weeks' time, we can fill spaces. Right now, mm. we have a call on a lion. Another call came in on a tiger and a lion, and they're kind of on a waiting period right now because we don't have space. Yeah. We're yeah. always filled. You know, mm. it's only mm. illegal 
in 20 states in the United States right now. Don't. When really? you say you're full, is there... We have no space built, okay. you know. I mean, if somebody came in and donated the money for a habitat, we built. Okay. And, and we will move animals, shift them from our compound area out to these big areas, which is what we want for all of them. Mm -hmm. And that leaves a, an empty enclosure, and it's filled in a matter mm -hmm. of weeks. Sure. Are, are there any animals that leave your facility to other facilities? No, sadly. Um, due to these people that breed and sell to the public, there's a lot of inbreeding that has gone on. Um, interspecies breeding, so they're not genetically pure right. Siberian, genetically pure So Bengal. a zoo would not want so them. So zoos don't want yeah. them, which yeah. is a really sad thing because if you and I went to a zoo, how the heck would I'm we I'm not going to know the yeah. difference. That's not a Siberian tiger fully. You yeah. don't know. Yeah. But it's sad. And, and generally, you know, there's a vicious circle out there. Um, a lot of times, years and years ago, when an animal wasn't making money at a zoo, it went out the back door. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, mm -hmm. which went to these private mm -hmm. breeders, which breed and sell to the public. Right. And I think that's my favorite thing about Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge is it's a stopping point. We rescue the animals, give them the best home possible for the rest right. of their life. Mm -hmm. We don't breed, we don't sell, we don't, you know, here are the animals come in from sometimes a deplorable condition and end up with the best life possible. Um, and you can see that I believe, you know, I'm not just being biased through the animals when you come out to see them. And that's something different that you don't see at a zoo. A lot of times in a zoo, the animals are made to, or they're portrayed as what they would be in the wild. Well, they're not. They're in captivity and they have to look at yeah. us humans all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of our animals were raised, hand raised right. by people. Doesn't mean it took the wild out of them, mm -hmm. but they do show compassion towards us, mm -hmm. you know, and give friendly greetings. And, and we do, you know, the, the staff and interns that we have do have some protected contact with them. We don't enter any enclosures, but, um, and so you see the animals, um, you know, make contact, you know, talking to the public and, and different things that go on. I think that's what's so unique about it, um, mm -hmm. reading their story and, mm -hmm. and you can really see into the animal a little bit more than you can at a zoo. What's your current need now? Always money. I mean, we always need to keep growing for these animals. We need to keep growing. Mm -hmm. And until it's illegal in the United States, it's going to be an ongoing problem. And of course, as states pass laws, you know, it creates mm -hmm. more animals that need to be rescued. Right. I mean, there weren't any laws in Arkansas until 2005. We, one of our former interns wrote a bill for the state of Arkansas. And now it's, you know, there's, it's regulated for tigers, lions, and bears, not the smaller, but you wouldn't believe the people that were at the meetings trying to fight against it that are breeding and selling. Hmm. Um, wow. So we're always needing to expand. You know, we need the financial donations to come in so that we can build more, hmm. you know. Um, we, we like to always say, you know, if, if we build it, they can run. And that's what we want for all of them. Okay. You Certainly, know. this powwow is an opportunity to bring <laughs> funds into the exactly. Creek, yeah, so. it's a festival right out front every Father's Day weekend, um, and it does it. it I, all the proceeds from it benefit the animals, and so um, it's a great way if you want to come out and, and get to go to a really neat event um, and also support the cats. Right. It's a great thing to do. Plus, you can come in and and see the animals too. And this year we're honoring our, our founder, uh, one of our founders who passed away this February. Okay. And uh, the powwow was her favorite event that we did. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's going to mean a little bit more, I think, to all of us this year. Right. Too. Good. Now, wow. um, uh, are you open year-round? Every day, except for Christmas Day. Okay. Um, we open at 9, and in the summertime right now we close at 6. We feed at 5, close at 6. Our winter hours we feed at 4 and close at 5. Okay. So, and admission? It's uh, $15 for adults, $10 for children, um, seniors, veterans, and it's an all-day pass. But we also have family memberships that I think are running at 80 right now for your family. You can come okay. out as much okay. as you want okay. all but year you, long. But you said the best thing to do is come in the morning, then, then leave the yeah. morning. Yeah, during the hottest part of the day. Right, right come now. early come for the early tour, yeah. Come because, back for the feeding. You know, and we've already, you know, seen that. This is really early in the year for the heat right. to be yeah. this strong. Yeah. Yeah. And the cats are still shedding. I mean, you know, right. when, when it started getting this hot, a lot of the tigers hadn't lost their winter coat. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just, you know, 
they're just trying to cool down themselves exactly. and we've had people come in and and be like oh my god they're just sleeping you know well it's well, a sanctuary yeah we let yeah, them do sure. whatever yeah you know yeah. we don't Get a up. lot of them yeah <laughs> a lot of them have pools the tigers have mm -hmm. like cow trough pools right. and they'll get in and sit in them and bathe and i would do our grizzly bear does and he mm -hmm. puts on quite a show mm -hmm. at the refuge anyway he's mm -hmm. really likes to get involved with the public and you know, kids, and when mm -hmm. the kids are running around, he starts mm -hmm. running around, and so well, that's, it's neat. That's, that's really interesting. And, yeah. And, uh, I've never been. I'll, I'll, Shame. when we go out that way. Shaman. Well, I need to, I'll <laughs> Take come your out. camera. I'll, I'll come if they'll out. let you. Oh, yeah, we do. That's on a deal. We have photo shoots, too. We have um, different photography clubs that have come out, and you can do a photo shoot with a staff member and actually go behind the scenes and oh, be cool. able to go to these big habitat areas and put your lens oh, right up to the fence. That's awesome. That's and nice. get some amazing pictures, right. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah Emily, thanks well, thank for you for having coming, coming over yeah. today. Yeah, well, thanks so much. And I encourage everybody to come out. Yeah. No doubt. Come out anytime. The powwow again is? Uh... The Father's Day weekend, 17th through the 19th. Okay, all right. And, and I know yeah. you have a website, but I'm sure if you Google Turpentine Creek, then you can get Yeah, we do. It's um, turpentinecreek.org. Okay. We're also on Facebook. Um, so we okay. have a lot of following on that too. Get that social All media right. going. Yeah, you got yeah. to. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, uh, we took our cameras out to the uh, the Harrison High School Stadium out there. We're talking to the new coach, Chad Harbison, and he he talks to Lauren Tepper about uh, the future of the Harrison Goblins and what he's planning to do in the next uh, generations. We'll All see. Right. Stay with us.